Welcome to Learnpedia, the ultimate JE and NEET prep tool currently being used by more than 20,000 aspirants. Now, let's see if you can answer this actual NEET question. If you think you got the answer, post it in the comments section below. To understand the concept behind this question, go ahead and watch the full video. Nodulation in leguminous roots. These are the roots of leguminous plants and these are the nodules. Nitrogen fixation is the outcome of symbiotic relationship between the rhizobium, bacterium and the leguminous plant. This process requires cooperation of nod genes of legumes, nod, nif and fix genes cluster of bacteria. During the process of nitrogen fixation, the free atmospheric nitrogen is first bound to the enzyme surface and it is not released until it is completely reduced to ammonia. Nitrogen fixation requires a reducing power like NADPH, FMN, H2 and a source of energy like ATP and of course the enzyme nitrogenase. Let us see how the root nodule is formed and various steps therein from the next slide. Stages in the formation of root nodules. This is the epidermis of the root and from the epidermis a cell by name trichoblast produces root hair. The roots secrete chemicals like flavonoids, sugars and certain amino acids. Bacteria are attracted by these chemicals and the compatible strains of bacteria move towards the root. The host that is root recognizes the compatible bacteria by specific plant proteins called lectins. Look at the bacteria being attracted to the root and when these bacteria attach to the root hair, the tip of the root hair forms a curl. The bacteria multiply and infect the root hair. This infection causes curling of the root hair due to the secretion of a curling factor by the rhizobium itself. The rhizobium bacterium secrete a digesting enzyme. They are cellulase, pectinase, etc. These enzymes secreted by the bacteria cause digestion and degradation of cell wall of the root hair. Now the bacteria are in contact with the cell membrane of the root hair. Now the growth of the root hair stops and the cell membrane invaginates. This is the root hair. Cell wall is digested. These are the bacteria. Now the bacteria attach to the surface of the cell membrane and causes invagination like this and the bacteria enter into the invasination. Look at this image. These bacteria after entry into the invagination, the invagination depends on the bacteria which line in the invagination looks like a thread. So this is called infection thread. As the infection thread depends like this, the bacteria are in a line and this is the infection thread. The infection thread elongates and penetrates into the inner cortical cells lying below the epidermis. The cortical cells secrete phytohormones like auxins and cytokinins. The cortical cells under the influence of the phytohormones, they divide rapidly leading to the development of young nodule. Look at the image here. 
the infection thread enters into the cortex. This is the cortex and these bacteria are released into the cortical cells. Go to the next image. The bacteria which entered into the cortex through the root hair in the form of an infection thread. Now they are released into the cortical cells. Now these cortical cells divide repeatedly under the influence of the phytohormones like auxins and cytokinins. Now this is the young nodule. As the cells grow, the bacteria also multiply and now the bacteria stop growing. The cell walls of the bacteria are dissolved by the chemicals secreted by the cortical cells. As a result, the bacteria lose their rod shape and they become round without cell walls. These round shaped bacteria without cell walls, they are called bacterioids. Bacteria which are in the soil, the resorbium bacteria, they are rod shaped. So rod shaped bacteria are called bacillus type. These rod shaped bacteria in the nodule become spherical without cell walls. So they are called bacterioids. After the nodule is produced, the root nodule is richly supplied with vascular tissues. Means the root nodule is vascularized. The vascularization is very essential because there is a need for the exchange of materials between the host and the bacteria. When a section of the root nodule is observed, the presence of a red pigment that is the leg hemoglobin is seen. Leg hemoglobin is an oxygen scavenger. Leg hemoglobin is closely related to animal hemoglobin and it absorbs oxygen in the root nodule. Do you know why this is required? Leg hemoglobin protects the enzyme nitrogenase secreted by the bacteroids. This enzyme nitrogenase is oxygen sensitive. As we have already discussed, in the presence of oxygen, the nitrogenase enzyme is deactivated. So, nitrogenase enzyme functions only under anaerobic conditions. It is imperative that the rhizobium bacterium when it is in the soil is aerobic, means survives in the presence of oxygen. When the bacteria transform to bacteroids, they become anaerobic. So, biological nitrogen fixation takes place in the absence of oxygen. Hey there, hope you understood the concept. Here's the solution to the question asked at the beginning. Found this video useful? Hit the like and share icons to enjoy more such videos. Learnpedia's JE and NEAT prep tools contain more than 4000 videos and over 20,000 solved examples. These can be accessed online through our website or offline through an SD card or a pen drive. To buy now, visit www.learnpedia.in. You can also experience a free demo of our product before buying.